Welcome, everybody. For those of you who don't know me, my name's attorney Howard Ankin, and I'm proud that Ankin Law is one of the foremost law firms throughout the state of Illinois advocating on behalf of injured workers for their rights to workers' compensation benefits when they're hurt on the job. For over 100 years or more, people have been entitled to get workers' compensation benefits. And the basis of those benefits have always been to protect the injured worker at the time that they are most vulnerable. When is that? That is the time that they are hurt. However, with changes of society and how things change, the concept that somebody might be working on the shop floor to today when somebody may be working from home, the question becomes, are you entitled to workers' compensation benefits when you're at home? Let's talk about that. My office handled a case this past year where our client was hurt on May 7th. And in the modern day world, she was working from her home condo. And different than the super being on the first floor that might come up to fix a leaky pipe, what did she have? She had an app. And on that app, she had an array of choices. She could dial into that app to take her dog for a dog walk. She could have somebody could help come in and clean her home. She could have somebody who could even do her laundry for her. And what did one of those apps provide for her? That was the opportunity that if she wanted to have a picture hung or she wanted to have work done within her unit, she could sign up to get that done. So, like in the modern day world, she's on a Zoom call and she's sitting in a place in her home office where she is doing work. And on that day, she had signed up for that app and she had somebody come in to build a shelf. And while that person went downstairs to their, to their work truck to get additional equipment that they needed to put up that shelf, what happened to her? That shelf fell and hit her on the head. Like most injuries, this was something that wasn't just a bump and bruiser, but this was something that caused her some very severe head trauma. She had required a lot of follow-up care for which she's still requiring to get follow-up care. She's going to need plastic surgery, and she's gonna have untold injuries that are still transpiring at this time. Those are the type of serious cases and serious situations which we're involved with at Ankin Law Office every day and helping people when they're hurt at work. The question is, is whether on this day was this particular work injury that she had while working from home and not in an office, not on a shop floor, was this the type of injury which was compensable? The question that we need to understand is, before we get to that answer, is what is workers' compensation? So if you're hurt, like in an auto accident, you fall down on a sidewalk, you may get hurt by a doctor, you may get hurt by a product, or in multiple other ways, you may have the right to go to the courthouse and seek compensation for injuries that another person might have caused you. In workers' compensation, in all 50 states, there's some form of benefits that you get when you get hurt on the job. What are those three basic benefits? One, you have the right to go to a doctor of your choice and get your medical bills paid for for your work injury. Two, you have the right to get money or replacement of your salary if you're unable to work. And three, you're entitled to get workers' compensation benefits or money or compensation for any injuries that you have when your injuries are permanent. And depending upon how severe your injuries are, if you're unable to return back to your prior employment, you may get the right to get vocational retraining, meaning retrain to a different job, or even you might get benefits for life if your injury is so bad that you cannot return back to work. So at that basic framework of what workers' compensation is, we now need to understand what are the indicators as to whether workers' compensation benefits would apply to somebody who is working from, working from home. So a lot of times for the workers' compensation attorney, we're trying to determine if somebody's in the course of their employment and also whether they're in, their, in their scope of their employment to understand if they're entitled to benefits. So what type of things, what kind of facts 
would we want to be looking at to understand if somebody's entitled to get workers' compensation benefits when they're working from home? Well, one of those might be whether they've clocked in for the job. Maybe the employer, when they're working from home, has a system where they actually have to clock in. Maybe there might be a system where they just have to send an email to say that they're clocked in. Or maybe when we go to trial, we'll just take copies of emails that were sent on the day that somebody was hurt, showing that they were emailing, meaning they were working like they were clocked in. We also might want to look to see if somebody has a dedicated workspace. So just like at the office, in the office, they may have dedicated, they may have a dedicated space, a carol, an office, an area. Same way at home. Is there in their home office, if they live like in an apartment, is there a second bedroom? Have they converted an area in their kitchen area where they actually have a small space dedicated to where they work? Or in fact, is maybe when they work from home, they just always work in their dining room or they work in their kitchen. If we see that somebody is doing that, maybe that is more likely with those facts that they could be working from home versus, let's say, if they were like at Starbucks. The other issue might be, what are the employer's protocols? So like in my office, most workers, if they work for a period of time, may be entitled to be able to work at home. Maybe they're only entitled to work from home on Tuesday, Wednesdays, and Thursdays. Maybe they're only entitled to work from home for a certain number of days. What type of protocols does the employer have in place? Can we use those facts to show whether somebody working from home is a work-related injury? The other factor might be, what is the mechanism of injury? What do I mean by that? Sometimes you may have a work injury where somebody may have a impact injury, like they're lifting a box of rocks and they injure their back or they fall down off of a scaffold and they break a leg. But there's other type of injuries that are repetitive, meaning they do them all the time. So is the question that like your work from home is that you're working improperly, like you're working in your living room and you're on your couch and you're typing and so now you're getting carpal tunnel. Maybe the mechanism of injury with those facts may or may not lead to somebody being entitled to workers' compensation for working at home. For me, the real question where the law is going is, was this work from home a detour, or was this work from home something you should be doing? What do I mean by that? Well, we're Americans, so we all multitask. So if you're talking to a client on your headset but at the same time you're doing your laundry and you smash your knee on the washing machine door, does that make it compensable or not compensable? The question may lead to this detour that you're doing. Is going to the washroom or taking a shower at that time, was that a convenience of the employer that you were doing that at the time that you were doing it? Or was that something that was personal to you? Ultimately, the driver of this, most likely for the trier of fact, is going to be who derived the bigger benefit. What do I mean by that? Was the benefit for the employer, there are some employers who are talking about now that they will not have downtown home offices. They have realized that some people may never come to an office ever again. They will always have a home office. Well, those facts may make it a lot easier that there was nowhere else to go. And there, otherwise, there may be some employers that say, the only reason why you're working from home is because this is a benefit to you. Just like somebody may get health insurance or, or dental insurance or eye insurance or they have more days off or they get a holiday off. Those are benefits. And it may be that that working from home is a benefit to somebody, okay, versus a non-benefit. And is it the employer or is it the employee? That is going to be a bigger factor. Ultimately, the trier fact is going to look at all these facts to determine whether somebody is entitled to benefits. But there's going to be great questions that are going to be asked about whether work benefits from home are compensable or not. And you could see that there's going to be somebody 
that is going to be mowing their lawn while they were on the phone with a client. And at the time that they are on the phone talking to somebody about work, that at that time, a rock may just shoot up and like hit them in the eye. And the question is going to be, was that a benefit to the employer that they were actually mowing their lawn at that time? Or was that a benefit to the employee that they were multitasking and mowing their lawn at the same time that they were trying to work? And that is where the law is headed when we go through these questions. In general, what do you need to do if you're injured on the job? Well, first of all, you need to report the injury. You need to tell people that you were hurt. And the longer that it may take you to tell somebody that you're hurt, especially if you're working from home, because it's a non-observed job, you're by yourself, that may lead to problems for people that are trying to claim that they were injured while working from home. The next thing that you need to do is seek immediate medical care and treatment. So the longer that you may wait for seeking medical care and treatment when you're working from home, that also may be a factor that may lead to you not getting benefits. You should seek medical treatment if you're hurt and you need it. A lot of times what will happen is an employer or their insurance company, as soon as you report the injury or they know that you are hurt, they're gonna try to get a recorded statement from you. And I would say that there is never a reason in Illinois workers' compensation why any injured worker should ever give a recorded statement. Unless for some reason you're an exception to the rule and your lawyer feels that it's important that you do so. You also, in some jurisdictions or some employers, you may be required to submit to a drug test. And if you don't submit to that drug test, that could be something that could be used against you. So sometimes you may have to submit to a drug test or otherwise there could be a reversible presumption that the reason why you were hurt is because you were intoxicated at the time that you were injured. Ultimately, like any legal matter, don't try to handle legal things on your own. What do you need to be doing? You need to be calling a lawyer. And in the state of Illinois and in the Chicagoland area, there would be no reason why you should not call Ankin Law, discuss what your fact problem is, Get advised as to what you need to do before you proceed further. There's a lot of times where people feel that they have great relationships with their employer, and maybe you do. But what you need to understand about workers' compensation is a lot of times your work injury is not between you and your employer. For the majority of workers, who's the injury between? That injury is between you and your employer's workers' compensation carrier. So while you have a great, may have a great relationship with your employer, the issue is, is that you're not advocating against the employer, you're advocating against your employer's workers' compensation insurance company. And so what are they gonna wanna do in order to defeat your case? Well, they're gonna wanna send you to the company doctor. Well. Is that company doctor somebody that is going to have your best interest in mind? Typically, a company doctor gets their business referred to by who? Their company or their company's insurance carrier. So it's typically best that when somebody gets hurt, you want to go to somebody that's independent. You want to go to somebody who's only there for you, that's going to look at your injury and advocate on your behalf. And a lot of times knowing if the doctor's a good doctor, if the doctor's a bad doctor, if a doctor understands workers' compensation, who knows that? The lawyers who practice workers' compensation day in and day out is part of their career. If you're hurt and you need to take time off of work, the employer or their insurance company might try to minimize your time off that you may need in order to get better. Ultimately, if you come to Ankin Law more than just the workers' compensation case, we're going to investigate all matters. And we're going to try to maximize and combine benefits to get you all the compensation you deserve, not just some compensation. We call those duo cases in Ankin Law. And with over 70 people that understand all facets of the law, we have different people that are specialists 
who work in various fields of workers' compensation, personal injury, social security disability, mass torts, medical malpractice, where we work to combine people's benefits, combine the laws in order to maximize people's recovery in-house, where in a lot of other law firms, they may try to refer you out of house or refer you to other law firms that specialize, where we're able to work together to make your case the best that it could possibly be. What are those things? Well, sometimes if somebody gets hurt at work, let's say they're hurt, but there could be somebody else that's responsible. There could be a medical malpractice case. There could be something where the product also injures them while they're at work. Or if they have catastrophic injuries for the rest of their life, they also may be entitled to social security disability and understanding how the money moves around, how those contracts are written, could either make it that somebody's able to get workers' compensation and social security, it could deprive them from getting a different recovery under the area of law, and that's why you need a law firm, such as Ankin Law, who understands how to combine benefits to maximize people's recovery. At Ankin Law, we advocate for all aspects of injury law. We combine all aspects of injury law in order to make sure that people get their full compensation. We have the resources of over 70 people that work in our office. We have the state-of-the-art technology that enables us to provide people the resources that they need. We own our office building where we're at. There is never a reason at our office why a case needs to be settled in order to make payroll. Every case is handled individually in order to make sure that that client is happy with their case. And if they're unhappy with that, our office has the resources in order to take that case to trial if that case needs it. Ultimately, no matter what, Ankin Law Office is here to help. And that's why our tagline is, Injury Law Made Personal. Thank you for listening today.